Hi everyone and welcome to this final episode of my alphabet of hair. So we're looking at X, Y, Z and that stands for eccentric, things that make you go yikes and the zany. And I don't even like the word zany but I couldn't think of another word that began with Z and I even looked it up in the thesaurus. The first video, letter A, was released just over a year ago. And here I find myself just over a year later and a COVID-19 pandemic slowly getting behind us, fingers crossed, filming the finale, the pièce de résistance, the ultimate, le fini. Let me get a... Oh. Oh. <laughs> As XYZ has proved to be the hardest letters to come up with any hair subjects for, I decided to chuck them all into a pot together and look at the weird, the wonderful, the creative, the mad, the bonkers, the crazy, the unexpected, the almost impossible, and the really of hair. During my earlier years of hairdressing, and we are talking mid-late 80s by the way, I've had some creative eccentric styles myself, which unfortunately didn't all get documented due to a lack of cameras and no smartphones back then, thank God. We only really had disposable cameras, photo booths, or a camera with film that you had to develop, which you'd often forget to develop for months on end. So most of the time, wouldn't even get developed at all. So, here's a quick look at some of my early haircuts that did get recorded. So as you can see, I sported quite a lot of curly hairstyles due to my natural curls. I had the bird's nest haircut when I was about 14. Then that grew into the curly mullet, one with the lovely little tash at the top in black and white. And then I had a curly bob, which then was, the fringe was shaved off and I straightened it with a pair of uh, very old fashioned straightening irons, which made my hair almost look like it was a wig. <laughs> and then I started to grow it out again, hence the pictures down the sides where the fringe was growing out, but the back was longer. And then eventually it got long again. And as you can see, most of these pictures were taken in a photo booth. I also had some hair colours which unfortunately weren't recorded. I had my Thompson Twins look, my curly blondish bob and my burgundy curls through perhaps various stages of my life. Anyway, enough about me. Let's look at what's out there in the ether for us to enjoy looking at for years to come. There's lots of funny books to check out to do with hair. So they're popping up on the screen now. There's some really great books to check out. The Mullet, Hairstyle of the Gods, Footballer's Haircuts, because they've had some classic ones over the years, Ginger Pride, which is a red-headed history of the world, and A Century of Hairstyles, which basically takes you through a little history lesson of hairstyles through the decades. Okay, so going away from the ridiculous, there's also the magnificent, eccentrically beautiful. For example, take the work of two hairdressers that I know, Angelo Seminara and Dejan Chikanovic. These guys take the art of hairdressing to another level with their wonderful, intricate creations. I would say Dejan's work leans more on the darker side of creation and Angelo's has a slightly lighter approach with more superb uses of colour. But ultimately, their work is exquisite and deserves to be seen. This is work that so many hairdressers can appreciate and maybe isn't for the masses, but it's important that this work exists and is seen. And going along the screen is their Instagram accounts if you want to follow them. In the hairdressing world, we also have the alternative Hair International Visionary Awards. The International Visionary Award is an international competition developed from the original concept of alternative hair by the president, Anthony Muscolo. The awards celebrate the new generation of talent in hairdressing, while serving as a platform for showcasing the stars of tomorrow during the annual alternative hair show. There's also the Black Beauty Sensational Hair Awards, which is an award celebrating creativity with Afro hair. Again, I'm amazed with some of the creativity that comes out of these awards, where they defy gravity or just sculpt the hair into shapes you never knew was even possible. Other UK awards held every year are the British Hairdressing Awards and the Creative Head Magazine Awards. Um, these are every year and you can see some really wonderful creations if you follow them on their social media channels. There's been some great films about hairdressing, albeit that they're all comedies, but they explore the world of salons, competitions and barbering. Although I have to say, we do have quite a laugh in those places. The Big Tease, starring Craig Ferguson, is one of my favourites, and it's about an avant-garde hairdressing awards. It's a great film for comedy value, and to see some of the crazy hair creations that appear towards the end when it's the big competition is amazing. There's Blow Dry starring the wonderful Alan Rickman, which is about a failing barber who tries to resurrect his career by entering the National Hairdressing Awards. There's a bit of a love story thrown in there as well, if I remember. 
Then there's You Don't Mess With The Zohan. Now, Adam Sandler plays Zohan, an Israeli special forces agent with crazy spy skills, with a dream to go to the US and become a hairdresser. This is hilariously funny and entertaining, and trust me, if you watch it, you'll be glad that you did. Then there's Barbershop, starring Ice Cube, which is all about a man who inherits his father's barbershop and how his love for it grows over time. Again, very funny. And there's some really good hair accounts worth following on Instagram. So I'm going to take you through some of them. First is Lost Hairdressers. Now this is a great account run by a guy called Clint who assisted me many years ago on shows in New York and they post various leading industry hairstylist work who they admire and are inspired by. They've featured some of my work in the past too. Thank you very much. There's a young up-and-coming French hairstylist called Jean-Baptiste Centen. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, his name's going across the screen so you can figure it out for yourselves. Who is creating some really beautiful sculptured hairstyles. He also creates a lot of wigs for some of the top drag queens. His work is astonishing and aesthetically great to look at. There's a great British guy to follow and watch, and he is somebody called Tom Connell, who has just been made the hair art director for the product line Daviness. Originally head of the Trevor Sorby artistic team, he's gone on to create his own work, which is a tasteful, experimental hair cutting mixed with interesting ways of styling. Okay, next, I want to mention here two barbers, barbers work, what? I want to mention here two barbers work that I really like too, and I also found them on Instagram. The first is a guy whose name is Shelwyn Jaffet. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's not always my taste what he does, but it's clever, and he's taking men's barbering and styling to another level, and I appreciate his skill set and what he does. He hails from Puerto Rico and is based there and has won numerous barbering awards for his work as well as launching his own range of combs to recreate some of the looks that he creates himself. The second is a guy called Wester. We couldn't figure out what his last name was. It didn't seem to be anywhere. Now he's based in LA and his work is about super sharp lines and pattern detailing. When you watch his videos, he creates like sculptured hair and also the other services he offers to his clients are amazing. Well worth a watch. Next time I go to LA, I want to go in and get my hair cut and just get generally barbered. There's a great Instagram account, which I love too, which is more of a joke one, and it's called Is This Your Client? Now, they rely on a lot of bad haircuts snapped on the street or in a shop, and to be honest with you, some of them I don't think are actually that bad on the odd occasion. A lot of them are shockingly bad, however, and you do wonder how on earth any hairdresser in their right mind would come up with these results, but it does keep us entertained. And finally, some of the best creative and maddest hair I've seen on the internet when people create some kind of style, be it with a haircut or a colour, to celebrate either a hallmark date or an event that maybe happens once a year. And here I'm talking about Halloween, Valentine's Day, Wimbledon, you know, all that kind of thing. So here's some fine examples of what I call hallmark hair. So these hairstyles are covering an array of hallmark days. We've got Easter with the egg basket. We've got Valentine's Day with a heart. We've got the turkey for Thanksgiving. The uh, stars and stripes going into the blonde hair, which was for Memorial Day. Then we've got a couple of sporting events. The yellow tennis ball was uh, done at Wimbledon. And then the black and white checkered one was done for a football event. And then to end off the year is the lovely Christmas tree. And that's it, lovely people. We've come to the end of the Alphabet of Hair series. Let me get another. Aww. Aww. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed all the episodes that you've seen. And remember, if you missed any letters, you can always go back into the YouTube or IGTV, depending on what you're watching this on, and catch up on any of my episodes that relate to any of the Alphabet and are linked to hair. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all very soon on some other videos, no doubt. So in the words of Looney Tunes, it just leaves me to say... That's all, folks. If you like this video and want to see more, then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is here. And you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. <laughs>